Hey everyone, my name is Courtney and today I've got some more fun spring and Easter DIYs. So let's hop into it. Let's dive into this DIY. You wanna grab some type of shadow box. This is a five by seven shadow box that I got in a four pack on sale from Michaels. I will definitely try to link this down below along with everything else in today's video down in the description box. So just check there. So pick whatever uh, shadow box you'd like to use. And then what I did is I did go into my Cricut design space and created a kind of a Easter spring subway art type design. And I cut it out with some vinyl and then applied it to the glass portion of my shadow box. For this next step, I did order on Amazon some mini glitter pastel colored styrofoam eggs. And the first thing you have to do is because the way that the backing sits into this shadow box, there is a little bit of a lip on the inside. And so what I did is I took the backing piece and kind of marked where that lip is holding that backer piece on. And the reason you wanna do this is because if you just cover the whole back piece with eggs, it's not gonna go in there and shut because I don't know how to explain this. I'm sorry. I hope I'm making sense. Those little lips um, is what allows the backing to provide kind of an open area within the side of the frame. I hope that makes sense. So like I said, I marked it and then I did take a piece of light pink cardstock and attach that. Now you want to mark, I only marked the sides, not thinking about there's also a lip on the top and the bottom. And so you definitely want to leave just a little bit of space. Don't put an egg, like I said, all the way to the edges. And this will allow you to be able to get that into the frame and no smushed eggs or anything like that. So I attached my cardstock with just some glue, um, using a glue stick. And then I was ready to start attaching my eggs. It's time to attach the eggs. So I just used my glue gun and started at the top corner, making sure to leave a little bit of space again at the top. Like I said, I for, kind of forgot to mark off the top area where the lip is gonna be inside that frame. And I just glued kind of going down in rows. I found that the easiest way to get these attached. It worked out really well as far as spacing and everything else. And I just alternated colors until I got the whole backing covered with eggs. The last step is to add some fairy lights to this little sign. So I bought a pack of these fairy lights on Amazon and it has 20 lights. So I kind of configured where the lights were gonna go on this and then I just grabbed my awl and I started poking holes. I'm telling you this tool is like the best tool ever. It was super simple to do to poke through the backing, no issues at all. And then I started to feed the lights in. I just kind of pinched the light with the wire, pushed it up, and then secured the back with scotch tape to get the lights taped down. And then the little pack, I did use a little bit of hot glue to get that secured to the back. And then this DIY was all finished. And I have to say, to date, this is probably in my top three of spring slash Easter DIYs that I've made. This Dollar Tree DIY is, I guess, version 2.0 of the cloche I made, I don't know, about two years ago with the carrots in it. So I thought it was time to make another fun little springtime cloche. I'm starting with some green paint, painting the base. It took me about three coats to get that fully covered. Once that was painted, I grabbed some of the little wooden mini pots from Dollar Tree and I painted one of them with some white paint. For the base of the cloche, I wanted to do something other than moss or rocks or something like that. So I picked up some of this uh, mesh green ribbon from Dollar Tree and I trimmed it down and put a couple layers of that onto the bottom of the cloche, just using a little bit of hot glue to secure it down. Once the base of the cloche was good to go, I hot glued down my little mini wooden pot that I painted and then I grabbed some florals. I went with some group of florals and I started messing with it. And then I was like, eh, I don't think this is the look that I want. So then I grabbed some sunflowers. I did end up grabbing a little piece of floral foam and putting that inside there just to kind of help hold these flowers. Then I filled it with a bunch of little sunflowers and I absolutely love how this turned out. The finishing touch was just to take a little piece of twine and tie it around the 
pot and secure it with a little bit of hot glue and then that's it. I've got this really cute little springtime cloche, perfect for tiered trays, perfect for your desk, just perfect anywhere you want to put it. say I'm very excited for today's sponsor because it's a company I've actually been using since 2018 and that is FabFitFun. So FabFitFun is a subscription box that you can get four times a year. They have two different types of memberships. There's the annual membership as well as the seasonal. So the annual membership, what you do is you pay for the year up front. You get a box four times a year, basically, you know, kind of once a quarter. Now with that annual membership, you do get to go in and customize your box first. So they open up a window where you can go in, see the products, read about them, see their retail value, find the ones that you wanna try. They're all full size products. So there's no little skimpy sample sizes and then they will send you your box. With the seasonal membership, you pay every three months. You also get to customize your box, but you do it after the annual members customize theirs. Other perks to FabFitFun is they do have flash sales where you can go on their website and shop for name brand products for super cheap. So for the spring box, there is a product in here for sure that I have been seeing ads on Instagram for over a year and I've been wanting to try it, wanting to try it. I never bit the bullet. And when I saw it, I was like, that's what I want. And that is the Thrive Cosmetics Mascara. Now let me show you, it is a full size, Full size mascara that you can use, like I said, full size products, no teeny tiny little samples. And I cannot wait to try this. If you've tried it, please let me know down below because they offer all kinds of brands. I've gotten um, Kate Spade earrings, Coach, um, Coach little purse thing, uh, clothing, like they offer good brands. It's not just no name brands. Another product that I was very excited to try is a couple boxes back. I actually got to try the Tula toner pads and I've been using these ever since. So when they had a Tula, this is the day and night cream um, that you could select for this time. Very excited because this brand is one that I'm definitely falling in love with. So again, full size product. I cannot wait to try this. The next thing, eye cream. This is from Earth Arbor and it is a hydrating reparative eye cream. And look at that. Yay. I mean, who wants bags in their eyes? Not me. And then another makeup thing I wanted to try was the Pat McGrath Labs. Uh, it's a fine tip eyeliner. Again, full size, no little tiny baby here. These next two items are the other kind of other categories I was talking about. It's not just beauty, makeup, skincare. So this set it was a set, right? It comes with the little headband that you put on. So when you're washing your face or doing your makeup, whatever, you can keep the hair out of the way, keep the water from dripping. But what made this set so fun for me, and it totally gave me 80s vibes, is it comes with the little wrist things. I don't know if you're like me, but when I wash my face, the water, it's like waterfalls of doom going down my arms. And it's so obnoxious. So this right here, like, Talk about simple pleasures, y'all. Like, I mean, seriously, would I have probably bought this for myself? Probably not. But do I need it? Absolutely. Like, it's a daily struggle for me with the water. Like, I, it's, it's bad, y'all. It's bad. So this was a really fun type item to pick. And then the last thing in my box I was very excited for because I'm always looking for cute little just kind of date night clutch purse type things was this cute purse. This is from um, Melly Bianco. And it's got like a... Inside, there's a little zippered pocket. It's kind of a faux leather, great little size for a date night. So if you are focusing on yourself this year, FabFitFun subscription box is a great way to do that. I have got two codes. If you'd like to try it out, you can use code COURTNEYGIFT to get a free gift valued over $200 on an annual membership. And if you're interested in the seasonal membership, you can use code COURTNEY to get 20% off your first box. For this project, you wanna start with some type of vase. Um, I didn't have a vase. <laughs> I thought I had one in my stash. So I start with this jar, but then I realize I had a Dollar Tree vase. So that's gonna change in a minute. And then you need some of these plastic eggs. I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but I have seen them at Michael's. I'm not sure if Dollar Tree sells them or not, but you're gonna need eggs that you can wrap around your glass vase. 
Once you've got those two things, then what you wanna do is we wanna make these eggs look like they've been cracked open. So I started with my hobby knife thinking that I could just cut into these plastic eggs really easily with that. Yeah, not really a good plan. So what I ended up doing was pulling out my uh, Walnut Hollow VersaTool is what it's called, but it has a knife uh, tip that you can put on it. And I started just cutting the eggs with that, which made it so much easier. And I did that to all of the eggs. Moving on to this weird setup. So I did go back and forth on whether or not I wanted to leave the eggs white or if I wanted to paint them and I decided to paint them and that's why I have these dowel rods sticking out of these styrofoam things so that I could paint the eggs and then just plop them on there to let them dry. So I just picked several different pastel colors and painted the eggs. I did end up doing about one coat on each of the eggs because I really liked, it was kind of given a watercolor vibe except for the yellow one for whatever reason that yellow paint did a full coverage with one. So anyway, one coat will give you a whole watercolor vibe, but if you decide you don't want that, you'll definitely need to give it several more coats of paint. While the eggs were drying, I did grab one of these wooden rounds. I got them in a pack from Hobby Lobby quite a while ago and took some brown wax and I stained it with that. I just wanted something that was gonna sit underneath the eggs in the vase, not be super noticeable, but kind of give a little bit of contrast with the light colored eggs. I just felt like it needed something. Plus it makes it easier to move and kind of stabilize your arrangement. So here is where I messed up, so learn from my mistakes. So what I did was I grabbed my vase and I started gluing the eggs directly to the vase. Would not recommend because even though I spaced it out and I thought, oh, these are gonna fit perfect, yeah, no, didn't work out that way. So my recommendation would be to put your vase down and take the eggs and glue them to each other just going all the way around. So basically what you've done is you've made a circle um, gluing the eggs all the way around so you could basically slide the vase in and out of the egg circle, if that makes sense. So don't glue it directly to the vase, just glue them to each other. Now you just want to grab whatever florals you wanna use and stick them inside of the eggs. I didn't use any floral foam or anything like that just because I, it wasn't really needed. And then place this on top of your wood round. I did not secure this down to the wood round. It's just, like I said, kind of a stabilization piece and to add a little contrast at the bottom. You could tie a bow around this if you wanted to, add a candle, and now this is ready to be displayed. You need a small bucket and two wooden spoons for this project, all items that you can find at Dollar Tree. I started by taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle and painted my bucket along with the two wooden spoons with that brown paint. Once your pieces are dry, you wanna grab your spoons and you want to trim them down. These are gonna turn into little ears sticking out of the bucket. So essentially we're making a little kind of Easter bunny faux springtime basket. I'm just using my miter shears to trim off until I get them to the length that I need them. And then I grabbed some plaster colored paint by Waverly Chalk Paint and I just brushed it over the two wooden spoons along with the bucket. With everything painted, you wanna get your two ears attached to the bucket just using some hot glue. And then I grabbed some green moss, filled my bucket up and then pulled some florals and started putting a bunch of different florals in there. Now, I did end up wrapping the handle with some satin pink ribbon. I probably should have done that before I put the florals in there. It wasn't impossible, but it did make it a little tricky. And I also just tied a little bow and glued that to the front. And then this thing is finished. I love how it turned out. It's very, very simple, but very, very cute. And 
And there we go. That wraps up another round of spring and Easter DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these is your favorite. Also, let me know, are you decorated for spring? What is your favorite decor piece that you have put out? I would love to know what kind of vibe you are going with this year. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Here are some more videos you might enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.